Okay, so my color palette's done and is down here. I'm gonna go ahead and hide Safari. And let's talk about this palette for a moment because we can grab this little dot right here and we can have additional colors if we want. We can throw quite a few colors in there and always have them. And they're gonna be persistent. So anytime I open up iWeb until I choose to delete them, they're gonna stay right there. So I can go over here to this banner text and I can choose the next gray over and now it's kind of yellow. Not a good idea. Instead probably go with that one. And if we want we can make this a lighter gray. So you can see just how simple it is to put these colors together. Yeah, let me close my inspector for a moment. Just like that. Now let's take a moment and let's talk about the different things. Let me close my color palette there. Let's talk about the different things we could do with this photo. So I'm clicking and highlight the photo. You can see that it gives me the mask right away so we can zoom in and zoom out. I also have the opportunity to do adjustments just as I would in iPhoto right here, including working with the levels. So I can add a little more pop to it. And I think I like that. The highlights are a little higher. And we can adjust the exposure as well, sharpness, etc. The only thing I recommend avoiding is using the brightness feature unless you have to. And the reason why is because basically the brightness throws in white into the photo so your blacks tend to become gray. So that's a good one to avoid. I'd recommend using the exposure tool instead. And we'll get more into adjusting photos in iPhoto. I just wanted to show you that. At the same time, I'm bring up Inspector and talk about framings. I talked about this reflection right here. So I can click on the Photos Inspector. And that's not it. I'm going to go here to the Graphic Inspector. Pardon me. And I can turn off my reflection if I want. I can also adjust the opacity of the photo and the strength and the weakness of the reflection. So you can see how I'm moving that around. We can also add a drop shadow. You don't want to do that with the reflection, but I can do that instead. You see, and it kind of gives a nice 3D effect here. Or, if I want, I can also add a frame. I can add a line first. So there's like a white frame that Apple's put in automatically for us, and we can adjust the type of framing. So lots of interesting stuff to play with here. And we can do a picture frame. I'm going to take away that shadow. Well, yeah. And so that's very close to what we had, except you can see how the frame kind of bends up. So it looks like the photo's got a bit of a curl to it. There's a frame that gives kind of that 3D look. We can do like a stamp. Let's add a shadow of that one. See, so that gets pretty interesting. You have a lot of stuff you can play with here just before you get going. Or I should say just right out of the gate. So don't be afraid to get in here and play with these. And one of the things I should have mentioned while I'm thinking about it and this one we could even add the reflection to. And that ends up looking real interesting. We can also play with the shadow angle. So the angle that the light's coming from by using this little tool right here. And I'm going to take away the shadow if I have the reflection. I don't want both. But you can really see how that works that easily. And something else we should talk about real quick before I wrap things up on this tutorial is changing the font type. So we changed the color just a moment ago. We can also change the justification. We'll put it in the center there. We can do a background fill if we want, which would be see something like that. Well, that doesn't look too good, so we'll kill that off. We can play with the spacing of the characters, which is awesome. I mean, just that easy with the slider. 
So if we want something nice and compressed, if that's our, our brand, our branding, or if we just want to spread it out, welcome to my site. We can adjust the line spacing, how much space before or after a paragraph. But we can also, if we go down to fonts here, well, let me highlight it first, just to keep it happy. I can click on fonts and I can change the font if I want. So we can choose the font that works best for what we want to do. All sorts of choices here. And you'll remember a few moments ago that I showed you how you could change the background when we're looking at uh, the comic book theme, the background to the page. We also have that ability to change it with the um, background of the browser itself. So if I click here and I click on page and we go to browser background, we can do a color fill. And I'm going to choose that and we'll, we'll stay in the, oh, that's a pretty bright blue, but we'll stay in the blues. In fact, let's just go and grab that blue. So that looks real interesting. That's quite a bit different than the initial theme. Not a bad, not bad at all. Or we can do an image fill. So in this case, and this is something I'm going to show you a little later, um, I had forgotten I had this in here. This is from the comic book theme also, and I'm going to show you how we can go get different backgrounds from different themes. So ironically, this turned out pretty well with this brown right here, and this isn't a bad combination at all. So we can do an image fill, we can tilt the tile, we can do original size, which means it's going to disappear because it's a very small graphic, as you can see right there. And if I wanted to choose something else, I click on choose, and then I can just click on this other image that we used last time. In this case, I really like this background, so I'm going to stay with that. Um, a pleasant surprise. And while we're here, you can also see that we can resize the page. So if I want to make the page wider, if I feel like it's too thin, like there are some sites I go to and I'm surprised at how thin they are. We can either just click on it this way or we can go ahead and type. I'm going to type 800, hit the return key. You can see how much wider it's gotten. The downside is then I have to go and resize everything else. So I'm going to do edit and undo because it isn't quite it isn't quite balanced. So that brings us back to where we were. And that has a nice balance to it and everything is formed the way we want to. And one other thing we can talk about real quick before we wrap up is our measurement, or metrics inspector, I guess I should call it. You know, one thing I want to mention is if you hold down the option key on your keyboard and click on this, it opens up in a different window. So if we have a number of inspectors that we use over and over again, this is the way to keep those windows open without having to click over and over and check them out. So hold down the option key on your keyboard and click and a new inspector window opens up. If I click on this photo right here I can tell it to resize this way or up in here but I can also rotate the photo around if I want. So if I want to make something a little more dynamic I have that ability right here. It also will let me flip the photo back and forth. So if I want him to be paddling towards the right instead of the left, I can do that. And I can make it upside down, flip it so it's upside down instead of right side up. Now none of that's really doing what I want. So I'm going to, let's see, that's just going to resize it. So I'm going to grab our slider here, or I should say our wheel, and get us close. And that brings us in. Let's just make it zero. So I find that this rotate wheel is great for making big adjustments and then I usually use the um, angle triangles right here to fine tune it. Otherwise it gets a little tough. Okay, so that wraps up part one of using iWeb and we're going to go and get a little deeper into it next time, do even more advanced stuff than we have now. If you have any questions, please go by the Understand Your Mac website um, or feel free to email me at understandyourmac at me.com. I'm James with Understand Your Mac. Have an outstanding day.